Welcome to the assembly video for Shaboko 5 Pro. I'm Kevin Barnett from Carbide 3D HQ here in California. We are so proud to debut this Shaboko 5 Pro machine in 4x4, 4x2, and 2x2 sizes for you, the consumer. If you're upgrading from one of our previous machines, we're glad you're here. If you're just joining the family for the very first time, welcome. This is a culmination of 10 years of work, feedback, development, all of that engineered into this machine so that we can provide you the best experience possible. This assembly is going to be the easiest assembly we've ever had. This machine is best in class design and capability right out of the box. You're ready to cut wood, metal, plastics, and do a whole variety of different cutting tasks that you're going to enjoy. As you open the boxes, the first thing you're going to notice is the amount of pre-assembly that has been done. The gantry, pre-assembled. Z-axis, pre-assembled. The drag chain, pre-wired on the right-hand side. There is much less to do. There is a little bit of a repetitive task when it comes to putting together the hybrid bed. The time on that is going to vary depending upon your machine. But it's straightforward, simple, and we've ensured the accuracy of these components. You are going to enjoy this assembly and getting started with the machine. The PDF assembly guide will be making regular appearances throughout this video. It may not always match up with the exact version that you are seeing right now. Don't freak out. Was I freaking out? We are always working to improve that assembly guide along with this video. You're a rational human being capable of complex thought. Well, maybe not. Never mind, just freak out. In all seriousness, our end goal is that you have success with your machine and the constant improvements to the video and the PDF guide are part of that. Just reason it out and follow along. Here I'm going to take you through the assembly for the 4x4, the largest of the three machines. If you have the 4x2 or the 2x2, know that all the components are exactly the same. It's just the hybrid bed that's going to vary in size. If you haven't yet visited my.carbide3d.com, please do, especially if you're thinking about getting a machine or right now you're waiting for your machine to arrive. There you will find every resource that we have. Projects, training, information, support contact, ideas. There's a whole lot to explore on my.carbide3d.com well before your machine arrives. So you're prepared to spend the hour to hour and a half assembling your machine and get right to enjoying it. This video is meant as a supplement to the assembly guide. We shot it in real time. Certain portions will be sped up, mostly associated with the hybrid bed. You might want to pause it, or if you don't have your machine yet, watch it all the way through and reference it later. There will be some slight differences in assembly strategy as well as the order. Don't worry about that. When in doubt, follow your PDF guide. That is the best source. Let's get you started. Let's get you making. We want to take you from boxes to a fully assembled machine where you can start to enjoy the power that is CNC. Here we go. Step one, base frame construction and gantry mounting. First thing you want to do, Unbox everything. You're going to get a couple of huge boxes if you have a 4x4, 4x2, 2x4, might be a little bit different configuration. We have the big machine going in here. Winston and I decided to unbox these two on the table where the machine is going to be built. You might want to do it on a different table or perhaps on the floor and then move parts to your table as you're starting to assemble your machine. That's what we're going to end up doing later. Two big boxes. One is going to contain your Y rails along with some other boxed materials. The other will contain your gantry along with the hybrid table slats and MDF. Go ahead and inspect everything, pull it out and compare it against this list. We're really proud of the packaging here. This machine should get you undamaged, despite what is sure to be the shipping company's best efforts. You'll immediately see on the gantry how much pre-assembly has already been done for you. If you have that 4x4, invite a friend over and enjoy the build together. Your assembly table doesn't need to be 100% to size. You can have a little bit of an overhang. You just have to be cautious of that. You're going to see that here in the video. For the long-term home of your machine, we definitely recommend a table that's larger than the overall footprint of the machine itself. We have a tables video in the playlist. Winston and I were taking our time taking the machine out. First time we had had a production machine in our shop. We were excited just the same as I know you're excited. Whether you're watching this before you get your machine or thinking about getting a machine, or if you're watching this and those boxes are sitting right across from you. We know exactly how you feel. We're just a bunch of CNC nerds too. Go ahead and pull out the four base frame tubes which should be in their own package. The spacing for them is 15.7 inches. Eyeball it. 
then we're going to pull out the rails and you can align them with the Y rails. Now here we're going to start on the right side as you are in the manual. So we're pulling everything off to the left so that rail comes in and sits handily on the table, fully supported. So Winston's going to lay in the right side Y, which has a lot of pre-assembly done on it as well. You'll notice all the mounting brackets are there for the gantry, which will be up in just a second. You're going to start with the M6 by 16 screws, eight per side. You'll notice how few screws, bolts, attachments, and work there really is to assembling this machine. With those eight secured but not totally tightened, go ahead and move on to the left side rail. I'm bringing it in here and I'm going to enter the next eight screws into those base rails. Just take your time to align it. You don't want to cross thread them and this is the reason you want to be doing stuff by hand, not with a drill or something that could cross thread these tubes or damage the Y rails. We've spent a lot of time machining these parts in-house to ensure their accuracy. The last thing we want is you suffering massive disappointment on step one. Snug but not tight is what we're going for here. 16 screws in, your machine is already taking shape and it's time for the gantry. Go to both sides and pull the gantry brackets to the very front of the machine. That should make the install a little bit easier. You're gonna remove four screws and that would be two screws on each side towards the back of the bracket. The front mounting position is gonna be for that gantry shift. More on that in another video and at a later time. Your standard mounting position is on the back two holes. Bring the gantry in. If it's that four by two or four by four, it's gonna be nice and long and heavy. Be careful when setting it up on your machine. You don't wanna drop it, certainly not off the table. Position the gantry over the mounting holes and insert the four screws. As you can see here in the manual, we have a reference edge and a reference line along with the cross dowel for that M620 socket head cap screw. Be sure and pay attention to the position of the gantry. This is gonna help square your machine. It should be engaged with the reference edge. Here I'm giving a little bit of encouragement to the gantry, making sure it's all the way forward. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the screws down. And how about that? Four screws to mount the gantry. Yeah, I'm blown away too. We've done a total of 20 screws and this already looks like a full-fledged CNC machine. It's now time to rough square your machine. For this, you'll need to pull out your measuring tape and it's best to have a friend or assistant to help you out. You have to choose consistent pairs of points. Here, I'm gonna hold the tape on the inside back point of the left side Y rail. Winston is gonna choose the front inside point of the right side Y rail. Moving to the other side, you have to hit the exact same two points of the Y rails, this time in reverse, the front of the left side, the back of the right side in order to get an accurate picture of squareness. Do yourself a favor here and write down the measurement from left to right, and then make the measurement from right to left and compare the two. Most of you will find that a small adjustment does need to be made. So Winston's gonna go to the right side of the machine, I'll be in the back left, and we're gonna pull against one another, just gently kind of encouraging the machine. We are off by about a quarter inch or so. We're gonna go ahead and restring the tape, take a second measurement. It's best to have a partner not only for these measurements to maintain accuracy, but also for the adjustment needing to push and pull. When it comes to a four x four, it's essential. Some gentle encouragement is all it should take. Winston's gonna do a few more adjustments here, and we're gonna pull it right into square. If you're consistent about your measurement points, it should take one or perhaps two pulls through this process to get it all equaled up. After this step, it's gonna be time to tighten down your base frame. You can see Winston's getting those final minute adjustments in. Taking an engineer approach will definitely help you here. You've heard measure twice, cut once. This is measure twice, tighten once. Diligence will pay off when it comes to this process. Go ahead and keep that gantry in the front position. Get out your T-handle or hex wrench and begin tightening those front four screws. You're about to lock in your base frame. After that is complete, you wanna push the gantry back over the next set of four screws of your base frame and tighten just those four screws. Repeat this process throughout the four locations of the base frame screws, and you should have yourself a square machine. We manufacture these parts in-house to guarantee their sizing, make it easier for you, the end user, to assemble and have a square machine. Winston and I are putting the final touches on it. Base frame and gantry all finished. Step two is gonna cover the HDZ Z-axis install as well as your X-Motor. 
Again, a lot of pre-assembly done for you here. The Z-axis already has a spindle carrier on it. This is almost a plug and play operation here. The X motor, as well as the end cap covers and the bolts for that are also included. We're gonna to get to those later. This is where I really like a T-handle. Have that prepared, as well as your M6 by 20 socket head cap screws. You'll need four for the HDZ install. Have those prepared, then bring your Z-axis in and put it on the locator pins. Everything here again has been precision machined and located to make it easier on your end. Push the Z-axis onto those locator pins and make sure you hold it until you have at least two of those screws installed. I'm gonna put the bottom screws in here, both left and then right. Those M620s should go in nice and smooth. Again, no cross threading. Then you're gonna to wanna to pull the Z-axis up all the way to the top here. I'm gonna check it, can't quite get there. Pull it up, just shy of the top. That should expose the other two mounting locations. Go ahead and put those screws in there and finish off mounting your Z-axis. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna finish tightening the Z-axis going corner to corner, making sure everything is snugged up. You only wanna do this one time. This HDZ is the most advanced Z-axis we've ever constructed. It's stock equipment on every Shape Oco 5 Pro. With those screws fully tightened, you have mated your HDZ with the gantry mounting plate. Hey look, there's Winston. Next, you'll install the X-axis stepper motor, and for that, you'll have to align the motor coupler. Spin the motor shaft until the coupler is properly aligned, and it easily slips in on that X-axis. Then you're gonna use four screws. You can call them screws, you can call them bolts. It doesn't matter to me. Put them in on the four corners, and I again would tighten them corner to corner, just to make sure everything is snug. You don't wanna over tighten stuff, but you wanna have a good feel for that stuff is tight on there, and it's not gonna come loose with any sort of vibration or later activity, as I know you plan to run the heck out of this machine, making all kinds of great stuff. Satisfied with that, it's on to step three. Step three is gonna be assembly of the hybrid table. Here's where you're gonna use a bunch of screws. It's not complicated, it's just a lot of materials. M6 by 10 millimeter flathead screws, you're gonna use 80 of those in a four by four, obviously less than the smaller machines, and M6 20 millimeter socket head cap screws, 40 of those, and again, less on the smaller machines. First thing you wanna do, get everything out of the box. Oh, what's in the box? Don't worry, it's just hardware. Bring out the extrusions along with the MDF, they're packed together. Just start basically aligning things. You're gonna to wanna to then pull off the MDF. I'm gonna speed things up here, get out the screws, everything else you need. You're gonna want a T-handle here, perhaps. We don't recommend you use power tools here. I know it's tempting, again, with the cross threading. I'd hate to see you ruin part of the base frame and then have to wait for your machine to get some repair parts. We don't want that happening. So go ahead and put your screws in. Do not tighten them all the way yet. I inserted all the screws first, then I came back and tightened them all. You wanna tighten them the front row first, back row second, middle row third. That is our best recommendation based on other machine assemblies. You can see here, I'm gonna go through it in a different order. It's a good idea to pay attention to the instructions. Let's get this guy moving a little quicker. How about some music? For the MDF, it's going to be a 5mm hex key and four M6 by 20mm SHCSs, that would be socket head cap screws, per strip of MDF. Again, depending upon the machine, the math will be a little bit different, the parts are the same. Again, per the instructions here, when you're fully tightening your MDF strips down, do the front row first, the back row second, and the middle last. Let's speed this guy up again. Bring back the music. and you might need to take a break at some point as well. If you're assembling live with this video, now's the time to take a pause and go ahead and finish off that hybrid table. For the rest of you, we'll keep going. You've made it to step four and it hasn't even been that long. We're onto the wiring harness on the right-hand side of the machine. And you'll notice it's already wired into the drag chain. We're trying to do a lot of work for you to get you making faster. 
Winston's going to take it and pull it underneath the gantry here and orient it up on top of that right side Y rail. Four M3 by six millimeter socket head cap screws are going to provide attachment. The front side is going to attach to the Y right carriage plate as Winston is doing here. Two of them there. After ensuring that the drag chain is up on top of the Y rail, you're going to move to the back of the machine and there's a bracket towards the back of each of the Y rails. This one on the right hand side, you're going to use two more of the M3 six millimeter socket head cap screws to securely attach that drag chain. Be sure and orient the drag chain so you see the most wires coming out of the back of the machine, not on the middle of the machine at the gantry. You should have a lot more wires, that whole wiring harness, on the back of your Y rail. On the back side of the machine, go ahead and open up the cable guide and safely string your wires through there. They will head off to the proximity switch and the other Y motor on the left Y rail. As you can see Winston doing here, be sure you're not pinching your wires. Open that whole canopy up and go ahead and snap it closed back to the other side, ensuring the safety of those wires. Next, you're going to want to install the wire keepers. Two wire keepers and you're going to have an M6 by 16 screw here. We had a little bit smaller ones on our early machine, but nevertheless, the process is the same. Install two screws so that the wire keeper is held in place. Again, providing a place for all the wiring throughout the machine so you can wire it one time and never think about it again. Tighten these down, but don't strip them out. This isn't the same as those metal to metal connections. You just want some good tension on it so that the wire keeper is held in place. Next up are the wiring connections on the Y right. So gantry to Y rail. There are five different connections to be made here. The Z axis limit, the Z axis motor, the X axis limit, the X axis motor, and your gantry LEDs. The breath of the creator fluttered against the face of the void whispering, let there be light. And light was. Each cable has a different connector type, so there is only one match for each connector. Be sure and orient the locking tabs to meet one another. This should be simply matching each piece with the correct female and male connectors. Once you have those connections made, go ahead and orient the wires inside around the X motor and inside of the gantry itself. We're going to go ahead and install the end cap on the right hand side. Be sure none of the wires are caught on anything. Don't have them all kinked and bound up. Just give them a nice turn. Bring in your right end cap. It takes two bolts to put them in place. Longer one up top, shorter one on the bottom. Top one goes into place by itself. On the bottom one, make sure you have that grounding wire hanging out. Put the shorter of the two bolts through it. And you're going to go ahead and screw that in with the grounding wire connection on the outside. You can push the grounding wire back into the gantry itself so it has a nice clean look as well and isn't going to get caught on anything. Right side of your gantry, all buttoned up. Next to the back Y right, and again, you should be able to simply connect the appropriate connectors. Find their mating pair, make sure the locking tabs line up, and that should have you wiring the machine with the correct mating pairs. At the Z axis, you're gonna have to make the same two connections for the motor and a proximity switch. Be sure and follow your manual closely. Any questions you have, odds are that document has the answers. On the back of the left side Y rail, you'll make two connections, one for the motor, one for the proximity switch, again, with the appropriate connectors. Returning to the right side Y rail, it's time to mount the grounding block. You'll use two M4 by 30 millimeter SHCSs. You'll go ahead and put those through the longer side of the block so that they can go into the threaded portion of the rail. There should be threaded holes on top and non-threaded holes on the back side of that block, as seen in the manual. With the grounding block secured to the Y rail, go ahead and take the green clad banana plug and put it into the grounding block. All this complete, we're on to step five. That is installation of the spindle or router. Many of you will start with the carbide 3D trim router. Go ahead and open that up. We include the wrenches you'll need as well as an extra set of brushes. In your spindle carrier, you're gonna go ahead and slip it through and then you wanna tighten the two bolts in the front. I'm going to tighten the top one first, bottom one second, and I'm going to go back and forth a number of times here until I get that router nice and snug, and I want it just above where it naturally sat in the carrier. I don't want it butted up against that top edge of the spindle carrier. I gave it just a little bit of lift and then started tightening these bolts. Back and forth, again, not insanely tight, but you want this to be pretty darn tight. There's a lot of vibration at this particular joint.
Next up are the drag chains, and you're going to have two of them. One is going to be on that left side Y rail. The other is going to be on the back of the gantry. The first drag chain on the gantry came pre-wired. This next one, you're going to have to wire with your power cord or your VFD control cable. Here I'm using a screwdriver. You can use one of the large hexes to pop open the drag chain. A little bit of an art. You just pop open one side. Be gentle with it. No reason to break these off. Get everything open and then you can go back and bring in the power cord. When it comes to buttoning it back up, this will be a test of thumb strength and durability. Hope you've been keeping up on your thumb wrestling. You're going to need a bunch of repetitive power for this one. Again, we'll speed it up a bit. This is also if you add air to your machine where the air will go through these same two drag chains. Once you have it all the way routed through that drag chain, go ahead and pull it back around. Here I'm going to click it into the foot that I've already installed on the left hand side of my gantry. You can now install that left side cap, again two screws, longer one up top, shorter one on the bottom, and that's it. Don't over tighten them. We chose to do this in this order. In the instructions you're looking at, it has you put the power through the two drag chains before taking them to the machine. You're welcome to try either. I like installing the feet and then simply clicking the drag chain back in when it's completed. Over time, you're going to get familiar with the general machine architecture. The left side Y rail, the right side Y rail, the gantry, the Z axis. You'll hear a lot of terms like this as you become more familiar with CNC. Drag chain pulled through, click it in the back. We are set and done with all three drag chains. On to step six. This will be your controller and your bit setter. The electronics, we have an entire electronics box. You can actually mount it there like a slip mount. This is what I did on our Craig table. And you're going to have to make a number of connections to it. First is the main power. You'll notice there's a main power switch for the power supply underneath. Then you'll plug in the two largest connectors. First the switches, then the motors. Once again, be sure and pay attention to the direction of the locking tabs. They should be off to the right side. Again, these connectors are each different. The power pendant is next. The lower left hand plug is the location for the power pendant. The upper left plug labeled spindle is for an optional bit runner or the VFD if your machine is equipped that way. If you have a carbide compact router, this connection will be left blank. And finally, your USB control for your computer. We've already added air assist to this machine. We'll have more on that at a later date. Time to go back topside for bit setter. Bit setter is now standard equipment on every Shape Oko 5 Pro, and he is my boy. Blue, you're my boy! Thank you, sir. Bit setter really is the best thing ever. Two T's nuts in that outer T track. You'll need two M6 by 30 millimeter SHCSs. Put them through the top of the bit setter. First one in back, second one in front. You're going to have to wiggle them around a little bit to line them up with those T's nuts. Go ahead and snug them down. He's in his permanent home. Bit setter utilizes that inside plug there. Simply plug and play. Here's a look at the power pendant and how it works. If you tilt it to the right, it will pop up. And you'll notice the bit setter is active as well as the machine C is lit up. If you press it down in case of emergency or when you leave the machine, you can press it down, tip it to the right, it'll pop back up. It also has a feed hold button on it, which will stop your program. It's simply a pause button. You can then resume your program from there. When it comes to activating your machine, you're going to need software. So Carbide Create is where you will design. Carbide Motion is where you will go ahead and control the machine. We have Mac and Windows downloads for both of these programs, along with cross-platform compatibility. Design in Mac, run it with Windows. Design in Windows, run it with Mac, whatever you want to do. It doesn't take a tremendous amount of system requirements to run Carbide Motion. This allows you to use a dedicated computer, either Mac or PC, for running your Shape Oko. Turn your machine on, hit connect to cutter. Before you go ahead and hit initialize machine here in the middle, go on up to settings and you're gonna have to send the machine profile. So click on machine and then you're gonna wanna load defaults. There are three different defaults here for a Shapeoko 5 and you'll notice the different values in X, Y, and Z. For the two by two, four by two, or in our case, a four by four. So once I have the four by four loaded, Go ahead and hit OK, and then I want to send the configuration data, right hand side button there, and it will send that information to the machine. Once you send this configuration data the very first time, that will be saved. You won't have to send it the next time you reconnect your computer. 
That same settings menu allows you to indicate what kind of spindle you're running, if you're running bit setter or not, and other machine profile items. It'll take just a moment for the initialization to be available. Once it lights up in that darker color, go ahead and click it. And this is exactly the machine behavior you're going to get when you initialize. It will check on the proximity switches. First on the Z axis, the HDZ. Then it will pull all the way back and it will check on those Y rails on the Y portion of the machine and the X will make its way over, pulling that Z axis all the way to the right hand side. After the opening initialization, you will have to set the spot for bit setter. The first thing you'll need to do is rapid position your machine to southeast or the front right hand corner. If you're brand new to this, there are a couple different ways to move your machine. You can rapid to a position or you can utilize one of four speeds to manually jog your z-axis to a point. Be sure and check out the video training unit running a shape oko over at my.carbide3d.com. Whether you run a three, four, or a five, the machines function exactly the same when it comes to rapiding. Once there, go ahead and put a bit in your spindle, whether it's the carbide compact router or the VFD. Then utilize the jog commands to move that bit directly above the bit setter. You can come within a few millimeters vertically of the top of the bit setter and you don't have to be in the exact center. You're going to go to the upper right hand corner, open settings, under bit setter, first check enabled, and then use current location. Hit OK, your machine will reset and require initialization once again. This procedure is only required one time when you're enabling bit setter. If later you disable BitSetter, you will have to go through a similar procedure. However, the software will remember the location you previously set. You can simply check Enable and reinitialize. One of the few times you might disable BitSetter and remove him is for surfacing the hybrid table. This time, after reaching the back right corner, the machine will then move forward towards the right-hand corner. In the newest version of the software, our tool change position has changed to the right side, much closer to BitSetter's location. You'll be prompted to go ahead and make sure there's a tool inside your spindle. With an end mill securely tightened in the collet, click Resume. After clicking Resume, your machine will automatically move to that previously established position for bit setter. The Z axis will then move down and activate bit setter two times. This is the normal procedure whether you're changing an end mill mid program or just beginning. With that, your bit setter is 100% active. The normal procedure at this point is to rapid the gantry out of the way. Put your stock in the machine, get your clamps out, secure your workpiece, and set about exploring the world of CNC. There you have it. The entire machine put together, hopefully in under 90 minutes, and you're set to get making. Remember, my.carbide3d.com is your major resource for everything associated with being a part of the Carbide 3D family. Support, ideas, projects, questions answered, places you can seek out, our community is also a fantastic resource. Post something there. People from inside Carbide 3D are in the community all the time. You can get answers from other users as well as the company directly. You've selected an incredible machine and we can't wait to see what you're gonna make.